my exclusive interview with the new Indian ambassador to China. We'll take a short break, and when we come back on the point, Russia has evolved from a skeptic of the Belt and Road Initiative into an active partner. A leading Russian financier will explain how that's happened. When China first launched the Belt and Road Initiative, there was understandable confusion in some parts of the world as to what the initiative really was and wasn't. In Russia, it was no different. Some Russian critics claimed it was a threat to Russia's traditional regional sphere of influence. But four years ago, Igor Shovalov, the then first deputy prime minister, became one of the first Russian politicians to publicly recognize we shouldn't view the Silk Road economic belt as a threat, but as an opportunity for the Eurasian Economic Union, a Russian blueprint for Eurasian integration. Today, in his capacity, as the new chairman of Russia's National Development Bank, the VEB, Shuvalov is teaming up with Chinese financial institutions to fund various Belt and Road projects. Does Shuvalov feel his past prediction is now being validated? In what ways is Russia contributing to the BRI? Earlier, I talked to Mr. Shuvalov. I think I was completely right. Uh, there are people who consider our cooperation with China as a little bit as, as threat or something, but I believe in mutual cooperation and mutual benefits. There are always people, and I think in China there are people who consider you know, Russia as possible threat or something, which is not very good and positive. But um, uh, understanding how the whole world is shifting and uh, the economic centers how sh they're shifting mm. and the mm, the center of all economic life is shifting to towards I Asia and China of course the most mm, powerful economic power at the moment and I believe that mm, you know considering personal relationship you know, of President Putin and President Xi and understanding how the Eurasian Union is developing now, where the you know, Russian economy is the core economy you know, for the you know, Eurasian Economic Union. I believe that um, very soon we will see um, good results where not only you know, these statistics, how people quickly earn money here, but how the whole world you know, is gaining because you know, these new economic powers are emerging. And, um, you know, you know, the main kind developed a lot because the United States of America and other countries were very, mm, you know, liberal in terms of economy. They were providing very fast mm, growth, growth. But now what we're observing that this happens with China and uh, Chinese partners. Russia and Eurasian Union are partners for this economic shift. Yeah. Well, we are right at the, at the threshold of the second Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation, and China just released a paper basically summarizing, taking stock of mm -hmm. the progress of the Belt and Road Initiative. And in that document, which is called Belt and Road Progress, mm -hmm. Contributions and Prospects, Russia was mentioned 18 times, more than any other country. Which uh, is good. Which is good. Why do you think Russia is so important, and what does that mean? for your institution now that Russia is in such an important uh, position in the Belt and Road Initiative? Uh, if you look at the top level of competition, uh, we observe now the competition between China and the United States. But I think that outlook and the final result for the benefits every, everybody is getting will be which way it takes Russia. I mean in terms of alliance. Mm. And uh, last year, China, Russia, and Eurasian Union, it was in May actually, they signed a um, trade um, facilitation uh, and cooperation agreement, which is maybe the first phase to build a uh, wider Eurasia. And in order to build a uh, wider Eurasia, which is not political, and economic first, then we need to provide for people better standards of living and for economies something which mm -hmm. definitely shows you know, to the whole world we are standing very strong. And uh, 
you know, it doesn't surprise me at all that Russia uh, is mentioned 18, 18 yeah. times, as you say. But mm, yeah, now we have altogether 115 projects which we consider as common projects for uh, Eurasian Union countries, which are five, including Russia, of course, and China itself. So these projects, gas transmission uh, system, gas refinery plants, um, manufacturing of vehicles and you know, you know, heavy industries, lots of different things, and including new type of services. And I believe myself, and I know many friends who are within the Russian government, they support this idea as well, that we can provide better services and new technology uh, goods for, the, uh, you know, for other countries where we, are, uh, we produce them together. We create partnerships, mm -hmm. and these partnerships would be uh, something, you know, another meaning for, for the main kind. Some academics have suggested, however, that Russia and the states in Central Asia have yet to make a substantial input into the Belt and Road Initiative. Do you agree with that? It's, it's again is uh, the first question: Why, you know, um, as you mentioned, that you know m some experts m consider our cooperation as a threat, and some, I think, the same experts think that. Uh, Central Asian countries and Russia should provide something more towards this format. Mm. Uh, I think w whatever we are doing at the moment, we even give more for this uh, initiative. If you consider how um, all these projects and 115 projects are being developed at the moment, and our initiative, which was called then by President Xi, um, ICE mm, yeah, Silk Road, uh, so altogether, Eurasian Union, one way, um, uh, you know, one belt, altogether creates a unique atmosphere, where you use different oceans, tier territories, you can uh, transfer goods, technologies, and every, you know, and everything is supported by um, finance, usually from uh, Chinese financial system. Yeah. So I think that you know we cannot provide for this initiative more maybe finance for the moment because, as you maybe, of course, you know that um, Russian financial institutions are sanctioned by European Union and the, the United States of America. W yet we get help and assistance from uh, the Chinese uh, yeah, bank, exactly. uh, financial system. So I think we are balancing now. We are giving the resources. We are giving. Uh, we are providing uh, people's talented. We, we are very open to support uh, through the governmental system and man mandatory rules. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, our mm, cooperation is very successful. And we will see how mm, the presidency and President Putin will meet separately. You are chairman of this Russian bank called uh, VEP. Would you tell us a bit about uh, this bank, uh, how it is uh, going on today, and what are your pri priorities for China and for Asia? It used to be the bank, actually. Now it's mm, called the State Corporation for Development. And the new name, VEP.RF. So uh, this is a new organization. Uh, we mm, finalized the transition period. Uh, we have talented people in our team, new capital, mm -hmm. uh, all you know, problems which we had now sorted out by the government. Yeah. So we are ready to invest along with our partners and our partner, the major partner in China, uh, China Development Bank. So this new organization with talented people ready to invest and finance, provide finance for new deals. Yeah. What are the priorities, though, especially when it comes to China and Asia? It's again one road, one belt, and um, in conjunction with Eurasian Economic Union. Mm -hmm. And we believe there is mutual benefit and cooperation, and it will bring you know wealth for both nations. Nations. Yeah. You mentioned the um, the collaboration between the China uh, Development. CDB. 
the China Development Bank mm -hmm. and uh, your institution, which is Web, Web yeah, Web, and uh, yes, last June actually there was an agreement for the CDB to loan about 10 billion US dollars to your bank, and uh, together you created a funding mechanism mm -hmm. for projects along uh, under the Belt and Road mm -hmm. Initiative. Would you elaborate a little bit more on that? Exactly, how does it work? What are the projects, for instance, you're looking at? Um, I, I was told that there could be as many as 70 projects that mm -hmm. could be financed through this initiative. And what does this mechanism mean for your bank? Okay, from both sides, Chinese and Russian, um, there are investors who initiate, uh, initiate um, the you know, particular projects. And they are seeking for the back from the government and they are seeking um, uh, for the back uh, in financial terms. We brought to the table a few projects like um, gas refinery in Blagoveshensk, uh, a few projects in uh, Vladivostok. Now we are considering a few new plants in central Russia and um, uh, um, highway from you know, the western part of China to the um, you know, western um, to the Western Europe mm -hmm. and highway or high-speed railways from Beijing to Moscow. So we are considering different parts, not we are responsible for the whole project, but there are a few parts in, you know, which could be very profitable in terms of you know, private and public partnerships. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, together with China, Invest, China Development Bank, consider this project and our side, in order to stimulate financial organizations, which are private or commercial banks, we need to provide you know, certain um, uh, you know, instruments like guarantees or equity or maybe cheaper uh, borrowings, which we are doing. And uh, we are expecting to sign a new uh, platform um, agreement with uh, CDB, um, you know, within the framework of uh, this uh, second summit. One. Mm. Uh, and uh, it will mean that we are, along with CDB, the major institutions for these you know, to provide these partnerships. Yeah. Well, I understand that uh, your bank experienced some difficulties according to a Reuters report that uh, um, the losses that you suffered for the year 2017 was about 4.7 billion mm -hmm. dollars and that's double the loss reported the year earlier. So how important is the collaboration with China? Uh, for the survival, for the uh, businesses of your bank, so that your, the loans that you provide can become commercially viable. Uh, 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 okay, uh, all the previous problems, uh, uh, you know, they are sorted out by the Russian government. So we split the organization into two parts, the historical part, or all the part, and this backed by the Russian government. So all the creditors will be fully paid and it's it's not a problem at all and we have um, uh, a governmental guarantee it covers the period until 2024 25 and all the creditors will be fully paid and capital will be returned mm -hmm. for new projects yeah. we have so-called capi uh, callable capital from the government and um, the actual finance from CDB which helps us to provide real finance for the, you know, for the project and for the investors. And this is crucial thing and means real partnership. So all these 15, 17 or 100 projects which we will finance together you know, would be based partially on the financial support from CDB, which is very important. <laughs>